we're going into right now with the whole mushroom world. So I don't know if you want to start by making everyone jealous of where you live and <laughs> where you're tuning in from right now. Yeah, well, tuning in from Hawaii. Um, wasn't on Hawaii time. We do have a joke here in Hawaii that we're always late, but I was on time today. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to slowly let roll people roll in. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful day, nine in the morning over here. Uh, like I was telling you guys, got a little beach action this morning uh, with my family, get grounded a little bit, charge up the negative ions, and uh, now ready to hit the live uh, webinar. Cool. And do you want to give our, our listeners a little bio of, of where you're coming from and, and what inspired you to get into biohacking and, and just supporting your overall health? For sure. I mean, uh, we'll definitely touch more based on uh, fine tuning things, but basically been a water athlete my whole life, I'm born and raised here in Hawaii. So we're surrounded by <laughs> a lot of water here on this rock. So it was kind of inevitable. My dad and my mom both were professional athletes in the windsurfing world, kiting world, that whole realm of things. So again, kind of inevitable they are both involved heavily in the sporting world in the water and uh for me just growing up here was really drawn really close to the water whether it was surfing paddleboarding windsurfing uh in maui we get a mix of conditions so in the morning there's no wind and plenty of waves you know so you can get on the water and go surf midday the wind starts to pick up so you can grab you know the wind toys whether it's the kiting windsurfing and uh, you kind of have a mixed variation, and that was always my, my go-to, kind of be in the water from sun up to sundown, mixing it up, whereas if you're just purely a surfer focusing on that, you kind of get the more morning and afternoon sessions, and um, that just kind of spun me into the whole realm of, you know, competition, growing up as a shortboarder, trying competitions in the paddling, windsurfing world, and it wasn't until I was probably about 14 or 15 years old where I really kind of took a hold of stand-up paddle racing. Uh, we have a few famous races over here from one island to another. Uh, Maui to Molokai is one of those, which is about 27 miles, and you're paddling for around three, three and a half hours. And then there's another race called Molokai to Oahu, all big channel crossings, one island to another. That one's a little further. It's about 32 miles, and that just kind of – gave me the love and uh, the passion of competing and that kind of just kind of escalated allowed me to take some trips to the mainland did well in those competitions again leveled up i got into more competitions over in europe asia and now 27 years old we've been you know traveling for the last 10 12 years competing six to eight uh, months out of the year and uh, loving every minute of it wow you were like the water warrior. <laughs> yeah, I like, to, I like to say ocean ambassador too is a good one because now especially, you know, not only am I fighting for, for, you know, a way to make an income, also we're fighting as an ocean ambassador to keep this playground as pristine it is like when my dad grew up in it and how we're seeing it now. And we're seeing those changes happening real fast, you know, in, in full spectrums, you know, you see a big wave of young generation and old generations really trying to make a, a push towards, you know, clean oceans, re, you know, getting rid of plastic, all these things. And then you have the other spectrum where, yeah, none of that's happening. It's all good. Just keep going as, as proceeding. But um, since I do make a livelihood out of it and also on top of it, it's uh, my happy place, my place of meditation, um, being able to share that with my son and being able to give him that same stoke. I want it to be, you know, a clean playground for him as well. Well, I'm sure with a family of athletes and, you know, you, you're young, you're in a vibrant place, you're trying to improve your health, you know, as much as possible in every aspect. Uh, and you have a growing family, you know, and there's this term that has been throwing out and it's really been popular recently called biohacking. Um, and I'm sure some people are familiar with it, but some people tuning in might not be. Uh, can you define what that is and what that is for you? For me, biohacking is, uh, in a simple way, is basically trying to find those 1% gains. Um, for me, 
we're training six days out of the week, three to four times a day, whether it's on the water, in the gym, and you can only get so fast or so strong in, um, in those areas. So then we got to tune it back one step and like, okay, so how do I get 1% faster or how do I maintain what I'm doing, but with 1% less effort? And uh, these are the ways um, I've been doing it is finding different ways to recover, different ways to supplement, different ways to find different devices to help boost my performance. And in a, in a sense, hack the way I'm performing by using these either if it's supplements uh, like the, the mushroom tinctures or if I'm using devices, which will be going over my top three devices that I've been using lately and um, things like that. That's been the big forefront for me personally. But you're basically trying to hack your biology and trying to push your body a little bit better, a little bit harder and through devices or supplements. I appreciate your definition and I like that you said trying to approve it and by 1% because that is kind of the reality of this, right? We're not pumping steroids into our body. This is a natural way of hacking the body. So I'm excited to get into the details. Uh, we have a few new people who came in, so maybe you could just tell us who you are and where you are and then we'll uh, dive into what you do. Awesome. Yeah, for the guys that just are joining, I was letting everybody know. Uh, Connor Baxter, Maui, Hawaii is uh, my birthplace and my home right now where the roots are growing. And yeah, professional waterman that's focusing on stand-up paddling at the moment. Three-time world champion and current uh, record holder for the 200-meter sprint for the ICF. But at the end of the day, just a new father and, uh, you know, have a huge passion for this whole biohacking realm of just you know trying to get that longevity so i can have more time in the water playing with friends and family and uh then comes you guys helping me on you know the supplement side of things which i've been really stoked and uh, having a lot of fun testing and uh on my own self and seeing how that helps my performance cool thanks for resetting the room um one of our first questions is what is sup <laughs> sup Stand up paddling. It's not a phrase where we go sup, <laughs> which we do here in Hawaii quite often. <laughs> but stand up paddling, uh, it's uh, a fun sport from, you know, ages of five to six years old to I've seen, you know, 70 year olds or for instance, yeah, my dad who's 72 now, he's out there on his paddle board almost every other day. So it's a beautiful sport in that regards. Also in the sense where you literally just need a body of water, whether you're in Hawaii with uh, pristine waves and downwinders and, you know, not all of us are that fortunate. You can go in the middle of a lake, in the middle of Dura. Uh, we have competitions in big cities. We have raced around, you know, the Statue of Liberty in New York. It's, uh, it's a beautiful way to get water and have a new perspective because we're always viewing from the land to the ocean most of the time. And this is a way that allows beginners, experts of any kind of skill set to kind of get on the water, feel that energy, and then, you know, take a second to look back and like, oh, wow, that's where I just came from, or, you know, that's where I am. And for me personally, it's a great way to kind of zen out and get some meditation time in. It, it's funny, I was about to comment, my mom, who actually just joined this webinar, she was actually written up in a local newspaper for stand-up paddleboarding, um, and she used to teach yoga on this stand-up paddleboard, um, which is so hard. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it's incredibly hard. I mean, you have to engage so much core strength to do it, um, and her mom, which is my grandma, she just passed just recently, but one of, one of the... Uh, the the last like memories I had with with her was stand up paddleboarding uh, on this lake, and it was gorgeous. Um, so I I have a dear spot for for stand up paddleboarding. It's super fun. It's you know kind of a mix between surfing and kayaking, um, and it it's you know uh, especially when it gets wavy or you're trying to do certain things like it's surprising how much core strength it it really takes. It really does. And for the yoga side of the thing, it's even more intense for sure. That's uh, not an easy thing. I mean, yoga at uh, in the beginning is already hard, but then it's like 
going on a BOSU ball and an Indo board all at the same time. So you definitely have to be skilled. And that's the cool part of uh, stand-up. You know, you got the surfing side, you got the racing side, you got the stand-up side. They're even now sending it down rivers and white river. And, uh, you know, there's so many avenues that they've kind of evolved with stand-up paddling to that certain location. Like you said, you went on a beautiful lake with uh, your grandma. And I think that's so incredible because a lot of these sports – um whether it be oh you need a team you need multiple people to even play or start the game or you know i need surf or i need wind i need some type of condition to allow me to go out and uh, utilize this equipment whereas paddling if it's waves no wind wind uh flat surfy you can kind of get a pretty good feel for it and get on the water no matter what so I view water sports and swimming as biohacking as a practice because it's one of the few exercises where you're working your whole body. My father is a triathlete and he loves to swim just to work out every little part of his body. And it might not be really rigorous for certain areas, but you're still using your whole body. But I'm curious about our crowd here. If you guys, uh, on the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions button. If you want to give us a clap or a thumbs up if you do water sports, it'd be nice to see a lot of you um, because I'm not going to assume everybody is living on a beach and doing this kind of stuff. But I think that would be helpful to kind of cater the conversation towards like how to stay in shape um, based on current practices. And that being said, you know, this is your guys' webinar. This is directed towards you. So please use the chat. Um, if you have any questions and, you know, we will open up a, a Q&A at the end for, for any biohacking questions that, that we can answer, any mushroom questions for health and wellness. And, um, but if any, any immediate questions that you, you want answered, we'll, we'll definitely answer it throughout this webinar. Totally. That's awesome. Yeah, glad you said that. There's always questions and we're definitely happy to answer. Um. So what, you know, in, I'm, I'm sure uh, stand-up paddleboard is a workout in and of itself, but do you do other workouts off the water that helps you prepare for three-time world championship? You know, uh, how do you train um, uh, for this? Totally. I think uh, there's a big part, obviously, on my craft, paddling and uh for the last year or year and a half almost now with uh, the current situation, they've definitely winded down on that just to kind of save those muscles, give the body a race after uh, rest after, you know, 10 plus years of consistent grinding of, you know, weekend after weekend. So I've been really tuning in and focusing on land-based work lately. And how I've been doing that is one big one was uh, the bike, just because you can, whether it's a stationary or on the land, you can kind of grind out a few hours without heavy impact as far as like running or something comparable like that. Um, it's really good for my kind of baseline work. In the beginning of the year, I like to get a lot of base work in and really stretch out those hours for a long period of time just to kind of get the engine tuned up and running nice. And then of course, three to four days a week, I'm in the gym lifting heavier weights, kind of gaining muscle, and whether it's a hypertrophy session, really muscle-based, you know, putting on extra um, weight there and muscle endurance side of things. So a lot of reps uh, and things like that, I think is really important on this off-season time for me. Because uh, once season's on, which fingers crossed, everything's going back again in August, September time, it's, uh, you know, gone for a week or two, you know, back-to-back -back weekends where I'm competing over in Europe, I'll be home for a little bit then off to Asia, then home for a little bit, competition in California, a few over here back in Hawaii. So there's not a ton of time to really get a real structured training in. It's more maintenance once season's on. So right now it's been heavily focused land-based, paddling every now and then, three to four times a week, very mellow, longer, uh, like I said, more base endurance kind of style stuff. And then when I'm on land, it's uh, you know gym, biking, and then a big thing I've been really tuning in and focusing is this biohacking world, but even more specific, more on the recovery side, because I know how to paddle. I know how to hit the gym. I know how to lift heavy weights now. 
and I have all of that, but I want to do it again tomorrow and I want to be as efficient as I was yesterday. So in order to do that, I'm jumping into the sauna for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes after a hard workout, ice baths. Um, like I said, we'll be going over a few of my other fun hacking toys I've been using, but like red lights and all of these different things to kind of increase the longevity because uh, in an athlete's eye, you have this short window of, okay, I can compete from, you know, my twenties to thirties and then it's pretty much all over. I got to go get a real job, <laughs> but you know, I want to increase that, that longevity. So people are looking like, Oh, how old is this guy? He's still going, you know, and you see it in a lot of sports, Tom Brady, you know, longest uh, quarterback in, in NFL. And he's not only, playing the game he is killing the game and if you listen to him he's all about pliability recovery he has certain clothes he wears when he goes to sleep that has the uv sewn into the material and all these things that are just trying to let him recover faster than he can perform at a higher level the next day and not be fatigued or sore and it's not necessarily about this uh kind of old mentality of work 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 now it's about work smart and recover harder. And uh, that's kind of the game plan I've been rolling with. And, you know, it's, it's hard to say, like you said in the beginning, it's all about those 1% gains. Because if I think about it as these huge, massive gains, and I'm not getting those results right away, it kind of comes deterring. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. So it's, I'm in it for the long run. So it's uh, consistency, doing these little things that might not necessarily feel like they're making a huge performance boost or a huge recovery boost. But if I stay on a good routine in the you know next years, looking into my 30s, I'm still going to be competing at a high level. It, yeah, it's incredible that momentum that those 1%, then another 1%, and you keep adding it on. And once you get this biohacking cocktail, so to speak, yeah. it really makes a big difference in the long run. And so everyone has their own uh, routines that work with them or their, their tools and their tool belt of, of what is their biohacking tool belt, right? And so I'm curious, like, what is the, your biohacking tool belt for Connor um, on a weekly basis, daily basis? You brought up the sauna, you brought up the ice bath and the red light. Um, maybe you want to briefly touch on those or any other hacks that, that you want to pass on to, to our audience. Yeah, for sure. I think as uh, far as easy ones to kind of maintain without having to go and spend a bunch of money and buying a bunch of stuff is two big ones would be meditation is something I do every morning and every afternoon. I think that's a great way, whether you're trying to be an athlete or just kind of crush out your work day, it really allows you to get that headspace that you need. You don't want this clutter and all these clouds and cars and, you know, thoughts kind of going back and forth in your mind. And uh, that's a free, simple one. And a, a great app that I've used is Headspace. And that just kind of allows you to pop in 10 minutes, 20 minutes in the morning. If you have time in the afternoon for another session, that's great. And try to get that 20 to 40 minute time in every single day. And uh, for me, I think that makes a huge difference. It kind of allows me to almost like a weight lifted off in the morning to go crush out my training sessions without a lot of uh, delay. And should I do this or, oh, should I maybe not? Kind of that inner dialogue, uh, which, you know, sometimes have a hard time, you know, pushing through. Uh, another one is breath work, something I've been doing a lot of lately. And Wim Hof is a fabulous program I've been following that uh, is helping me on the water as well and getting my negative and positive uh, inhale breath longer. And, you know, that static hold is super important for surfing, obviously getting held under the water. But same like that, you get this natural euphoric feeling of simply using your breath in a correct way. And um, that's been really, really fun for me. On that note, this is uh, one of the devices I've been using. So I'll hold it up close to the screen. I think it might be backwards because of how it works, but it's called AeroFit and it's a respiratory training device. So you have all these numbers on the side here, letters on that, and that's your inhale and that's your exhale and it's breath work. So they run you through all kinds of programs. It connects to your phone and you have from square breathing where it's, you know, in the beginning, four seconds inhale, four seconds hold, four seconds exhale, and then 
all over again for five minutes. And then you have your inhale resistance, exhale resistance, and the dials on the side here, that's exactly what they're doing. They're adding more resistance or less resistance on your inhale and exhale take. And this is something I've been using um, every morning for about 20 minutes a day. And it's uh, kind of improved my, my lung intake. Um, actually looking on the app, you tracking all your data and everything. Okay. I'm able to inhale way more oxygen and actually retain that um, air a lot better. And right now in this season with uh, what's going on, I think it's really important for us to focus uh, on our respiratory system, whether it's su supplementing with the right stuff and getting it strong enough so that if we do take on anything, you know, we can kind of fight it off a little bit stronger. That's awesome. That and I love how it comes with the app as well. It, it's something that I'm super enthusiastic about is, is data and how we can combine, you know, biological systems with our technology that that is increasing rapidly it's you know how can we learn as rapidly as possible about the world around us um, and I've actually seen that device on I think it was Joe Rogan some some interview and it looks really cool so I'm, I'm glad that you're you're having such a, a positive experience with it yeah no it's super cool it's uh, like you said it's it's the combination of you know what we already know breath work and all this stuff that we know that works but then connecting it to a device where it's actually tracking and logging your progress and your performance. And that was where the 1% gains come from because then you're actually seeing it first of all, and then you can kind of have a goal or, you know, more of an outlook of like, okay, this is where I am right now. And this is where I will want to be, you know, in the next six to eight weeks training on this device every single day, maybe I can get the, that 1% gain. And, uh, for the respiratory too, especially, it's something that we really don't focus on a ton of. It's there, we know about it, but there's not a ton of uh, specific, um, you know, training regimens for it. And if there is, they're a little bit more complicated. You have to remember it or focus it on yourself. And then, yeah, having the app makes it a little more, you know, simple and basic for you just to watch the app. And it says, inhale, you inhale, it says, exhale, you exhale. And then you keep on leveling up by changing the resistance on the sides. And it is nice to be able to quantify that development, but I'm wondering if you can speak to some of the other nuances in biohacking with how you know that it's working. Like what other tricks or things that you pay attention to in your own physiology to know that something is working if it doesn't have an app that conveniently comes with it to give you some numbers? Uh, the biggest thing for that would be setting goals. I think that for me personally has helped a lot because when I start in, say, a base camp for uh, training, I want to be, you know, I'm lifting X amount now. I want to be lifting that much more plus, you know, doing it with a lot less effort. And I think for me with all these different devices um, that I've been utilizing and using, it's more focusing on, like I said, the longevity side and the maintenance of like, okay, I know I can do all of this, but let's see if I can do it again tomorrow with just as easy, if not easier, and uh, setting those little goals for on the water. Okay, I want to be doing, you know, a 10 minute mile, I want to do off the water, I want to be lifting this much weight. And that just gives you a benchmark of, okay, this is where I want to go. And then, okay, let's be, let's be vigorous. Let's use these devices. Let's use this breath work. Let's use this meditation and see if in, you know, a month or two months I can be closer to that goal or did I pass it? Do I need to set new goals? And uh, if you have those levels to kind of start off at, I think that allows you to have a baseline of, okay, this is where I'm at and this is where I want to go. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's really difficult to, you know, track all of that stuff with um, without maybe spending a pretty penny on whether it's this device or that device but just simple goals and like I said you can start off with simple breath work and meditation uh, stretching and rolling just start there and see if you know in two weeks you can touch your toes if you're not touching your toes now and then you know okay now I saved up some money now I got the red light let's see if I can use the red light every single day and this will allow me to become more flexible in time. Totally. And, and, you know, 
this is also something that I deal with and I've heard a lot of people with any habit, you know, whether it's health and wellness or, or another topic, it's, it's hard to create new habits, right? And sometimes you might, I've heard a 30 day rule of if you can, you can do a habit for 30 days, you locked it in, right? Um, but how, do you have any advice on, on, you know, these new biohacking habits, how people can keep up with it? And I know you have a kid, you have a busy life, you know, and things come up, you, you might buy a new tool and then you use it for a week and then you, you know, you just don't lock the habit in. So uh, what advice do you have for just getting a solid routine in? I think that's a really important one. Just kind of setting the goal, like I was saying before of like, Hey, let's, let's uh, do this for 30 days. If I see some benefit or no benefit at 30 days, I'll know at the end of it. And simply setting a reminder on your phone. I have probably my phone dinging every other second with calendars, this call, that call. Oh, training's coming up. Simple. I just go on Google calendars, Apple calendar, log in. Okay, every morning I'm going to do 10 minutes of meditation. Your phone vibrates in the morning instead of picking it up and going on social media. Boom, I'm going to go on Headspace. I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes. And uh, trying to just lock in, I think, for me personally, seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I, I like doing that. I see definitely a lot of progress in the journey, of course, and that's what everyone says. But having that end goal really, like, for me personally, helps me drive me towards that. And if I don't have that end goal of why I'm doing this or what am I doing this for, I think sometimes you can be getting lost because if there's no goal, then why am I turning this light on or why am I using this breathing device uh, to just what to, you know, have fun or is it a hobby or no? For me, it's in six to eight weeks, I want to see my breath intake go up. I want to see my capacity of my lungs hold more oxygen, more liters of air in my lungs. And I think setting those reminders on the phone, and like you said, you know, every year we're like, oh, it's New Year's, let's do 30 days, uh, no alcohol, or let's do this for, you know, and it's why, why do we have to wait till the end of the year, we can do that right now, today's the day, and setting a simple thing of, you know, starting smaller, even let's do it for 20 days, and see how I feel and then reassess not saying that after 20 days, it's over, let's see reassess after 20 days, see if there's some gains, if I'm feeling better, feeling uh, healthier. And I think between goals, and the reminders, and then possibly setting a uh, you know twenty to thirty day uh, you know streak of okay, I'm going to do this for the next thirty days is really important. Cool. And we got a we got a question in the chat um, from Philip from Berlin. Thanks, Philip. And um, you know his question, just to recap, was about how he felt um, his athletic performance was supported by by our cordyceps tincture. Um, we can't go super deep in this topic because we're regulated by the FDA. So, um, but there's a ton of research on cordyceps supporting athletic performance and, you know, supporting our body's natural ability to utilize oxygen with, with supporting our lungs and, and, uh, blood flowing in the body. So, you know, if you're interested in, in going super in depth into this topic, definitely look up, uh, there's a ton of papers on Google scholar that, uh, you can geek out on, but, but super, super excited that, that it's helping your athletic performance um, with running. You know, uh, long distance running is, is super incredible. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to see more athletes using mushrooms. It's super awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cool that you're saying it's uh, supporting your muscle fatigue because this cordyceps for me is supports all around. You know, it's uh, something I've been taking now for a little bit of time after I connected with you guys and for for me personally it supported my on water and on land kind of training and like you saying I think it's all these little things combined that are making the next day a little bit easier you know and that's where the gains are really going to come from it's keep going having that consistency and if you do one hard day of running and then you're totally blown out the next day then you kind of backtrack a little bit, you know? So it's all about that recovery. And as soon as you get done with the, the run as well, it's fueling property before the run, fueling property. And if that's, if you're in a keto cycle or a fat burning cycle and knowing what exact things that are going to fuel that. And if you're more carb based, then, you know, really loading up on the carbs 
not necessarily the day of the run. You want to be loading up on those carbs and that fuel. You know, if you're going for a run on Saturday, you want to be loading up on Thursday, Friday, the days before leading up to it. And that's fuel based, that's cordyceps, you know, having it in your system is really going to, you know, stack on top of each other in order to make, you know, the next day a little bit easier, less fatigue, less muscle uh, acheness and all those things. Cool. Well, we have about 15 minutes left of our like main session before we open it up for Q&A. Um, do you want to go to your, your next biohacking tool that, that helps your life? Totally, totally. The next one, uh, this one I've been playing with, simple, wear it as a headband, wear it as a necklace, and this is a happy, it's H-A-P-B-E-E, -E. and uh, you've seen it probably a little bit from Dave or Ben Greenfield, and it's a uh, mood enhancer or mood hacker, and same thing, it connects to a phone, you have an app that Bluetooth connects to this, they really are cautious on it too, so as soon as you start the program, it disconnects the Bluetooth, so low EMF, all of that, and it's a mood enhancer, so if you want to feel like a cup of coffee, like you just drink a cup of coffee, you hit the alert setting and this will send signals to your brain to simulate the same thing as if you had a cup of coffee or they have a setting that's called happy and same thing. It's like um, if you have a, a glass of wine or a beer, you have the same sensation um, and the same signals that your body is creating when you take that cup of coffee or when you take that of wine and allowing you to feel calm stress-free focus alert and they're coming out with way more programs as well and this is one that i've been pretty much wearing 24 7 so i have it on before my gym training on the alert settings to kind of get me riled up get me some energy clean focused energy and then i'm putting this under my pillow at night and they have a deep sleep setting so for four to five hours in the beginning of my night, I'm sleeping with this under my pillow. And um, it's pretty amazing. I mean, for me, I'm always feeling those little differences. And then other friends or other people are like, oh, I don't feel any, I don't feel anything. And my wife is actually one of those people. And last night I snuck it under her pillow without her noticing. And she was like, woke up the next morning, like I fell asleep right away. I slept so good. I'm not sure what happened. And then I showed her that this was under her pillow. And she was tripping because she's not the one to feel these little differences and uh, really feel the benefits of it. But without her even knowing, this thing helped her get a better night of sleep. And, you know, that circles back right to the beginning of recovery. You know, sleep is so, so, so important. So whether we're using this to kind of relax and calm down at the end of the day or throwing it under our pillow to kind of recover and sleep better, um, it's a simple device. I wear it on my head at night or if I'm just cruising around during a workout, I'll throw it on my neck. Um, and it's pretty user friendly. You open up the app, connect to it real quick, hit what program you want, and then you're, you're pretty set. Yeah, we're actually working on a prototype with this company to uh, have a mushroom setting where you download all the information on mushrooms available. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wish one day. One day with Neuralink or something, we could just download, you know, uh, feel like a mushroom for an hour or something. This would be the company to talk with because, I mean, th these guys are, this is military and uh, NASA-based science that they've been utilizing and, um, you know, for all the, the guys up in space and whatever it is, but they have way larger scale and obviously a budget that's probably unattainable for us. So these guys are bringing it more to a user-friendly and um, allowing us to you know kind of feel those same kind of benefits that you know people have already been utilizing and with science-based uh, data that's cool. important i love it i've been looking at a few different versions of that um and i haven't pulled the trigger yet so you're you're just affirming it yeah. even more i'll have to pick your brain after this about more about sure that. yeah oh, that's awesome. just for everyone that didn't hurt it's happy h-a-p-b-e-e -E. um it's uh, pretty straightforward really cool they have uh, you know their social media stuff you can check in on all their information um it's been a big one right now that's kind of exploding uh pretty fast in the sense that it's so simple to use and whether you're behind a computer doing a nine to five whether you're a professional athlete, 
um, kind of goes down every avenue. Uh, if you're a biohacker or not, it's just making it available for everybody to utilize and kind of take the benefits on for themselves. And we'll make sure to put links to all these devices for everyone um, in the email after this. So the breath thing and, and that, and you have a third device you want to share, right? And this is, before you show it, this is, I just want to be transparent. We're not affiliated with these products. I don't know if you are, this is the first time we're seeing them. Um, so, you know, we don't have a hidden agenda on our side, but um, I would love to reach out to every single one of them and set up giveaways with mushroom revival so if you're looking and you're like oh these like i want to buy one of these then uh maybe take a look at our social over the next couple of months and and you might might win it for free <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's get a giveaway going i'll hit these guys up as well for cool. sure awesome I mean, they're definitely all devices that are you know i mean they have a little price point to them but um they're definitely worth it they're definitely something that are taking off both sides whether you want to get more on the training side of things with the aero fit and like i said i mean that's that's the size of it it fits in your pocket and all of us have our phone on us 24 7 and then same with this it's not too big you can wear it it's not like this huge crazy device that you have to like boot up and connect to a crazy monitor uh, these are all things that are pretty user friendly. We can keep in the house, and um, both of them are super safe if you guys have kids or family. So it's it's definitely two really fun ones I've been using. The last one, uh, been touching little bombs and hints on it, but it's the red light. I think has been one of my favorite. Far as same thing, pretty user friendly. I'll uh, turn that bad boy on once uh, I'm you know doing a meditation or. It's been a long day. I just want to sit and zone out, watch some TV. I'll place it facing at me. Or if I have a certain area that's a little more sore, um, you know, kind of base it right there on that, uh, that area. This is breaking down inflammation. This is charging up our, uh, our cells and our mitochondria. These are things that for all of us can use a lot more of. I mean, we're all getting these LED lights all day long. So this is a red light kind of flipping the switch on, you know, all of that, sending signals to your brain to kind of wind down towards the end of the night. And uh, the one I've been using is Vital Light. It's, uh, it's pretty basic. It's a pretty user-friendly one. This is their bigger model, so it kind of has a little stand. You can set it up, place it right there by your computer. When you're doing some computer work, it can be blasting your face. Um, it's funny because their biggest kind of uh, market for them right now is the beauty world because it's taken off so much for these models and all these different people for their skin. And uh, so it's hitting the skin. It's penetrating two to three inches through your skin, actually charging you up from inside out. And um, that for me right there was like, okay, doing some more research. Let's see, let's see. And um, this, this company as well, with all the other ones, Juve, I think there's a ton of different red light companies coming out now, and they're making them from these small little compact, uh, little handy ones, like I said, that can probably fit in your backpack and anywhere. And it's been something I've been using after a long day to break down inflammation. I got, you know, from paddling gym, all the things stacking up onto each other. You're definitely sore and tired at the end of the day but I got to do it the next day. So throw on the, you know, the happy or throw on the red light, I think are little things that are allowing me to perform at a top level, level in and out and uh, on the water, in the gym, whatever it may be. Red light is awesome. Um, that's infrared, but we, we just have like colored red bulbs. And even that is good because it's, it's blocking the blue light and the brighter lights during the night. So Alex's bathroom is actually just all red light. I have one bowl yeah. that's red and one that's white, and I just unscrew depending on the time of day. But it's that kind of, that yeah. is a hack for me of just like it's going great. to bed feeling tired when I want to go to bed. Totally. Oh, and it makes a game changer. Like especially if you, you know, you ever wake up in the middle of the night, you have to use the bathroom, and like just flicking on oh, a no. bright fluorescent light, like good luck going back to bed after that is just to wake you up but the red light is so soothing it's really really nice and if you're you know you're up late you're working you're doing whatever and um 
you know, you got to brush your teeth, whatever. Um, flipping on a fl- same thing, flipping on the fluorescent light right before you're going to climb into bed is intense. So that red light really helps, you know, once the sun goes down to kind of work with your, your body's natural rhythms. Um, and I use, we, you know, I lived in the Northeast like my whole life and there's snow, there's, you know, insane winter that I never got used to. And I got so affected by the seasons and when it was dark and snowy and cold, like, and I wouldn't go outside and I would work inside all day in front of a computer screen, I would really feel it. Like I would, I would get down in the dumps really, really quick. And so I would, I would have something similar on my desk. It was a happy lamp, uh, which isn't a red spectrum. It's, it, it kind of mimics the natural sunlight. Um, but that helped me. I, I flipped that baby on all day, had it like inches away from my face. I couldn't, couldn't get enough. But uh, yeah, interested to hear more about this red light on how is it different from just a regular red light bulb or like a, a happy lamb. I don't know if you know any of the science of, of how, what's going on there. Yeah, I think with the red light, it's more sending signals to your brain to switch over to the, you know, okay, now it's winding down. You take it back thousands of years uh, when there was no electricity, no blue light, none of that. When you woke up, you see the sunrise. It's that bright blue sky. It's really, you know, vivid. You know, you see that blue light kind of coming. You can really see it. As the day goes on, sunset comes, it starts to turn more red, orangish. You light candles, you light fires, you, all these natural substances. That light is sending signals to your brain to, okay, now it's time to produce the melatonin and now let's start winding down for bed. Once we kind of move towards more of the infrared, that's doing the same kind of just of, you know, you having that red light, sending those signals to your brain to start recovering, producing melatonin. But then with the infrared, it's actually penetrating our skin and going a little bit deeper than just the surface of our skin. And then you're getting more into the cells and your mitochondria and all those kind of things. And this is breaking down the inflammation, really literally eating it up, killing the inflammation, uh, inflammation all in your body and um, literally charging up your cells and giving it, producing it more energy and in a sense, killing off the weak and making the strong stronger. And if, yes. I've heard people use this in saunas. Have you, have you ever used the red light in combination with the sauna? For sure. The sauna that I, I use is a clear light sauna and it's infrared. So it's not your typical, you know, water on the rocks kind of steam, which are still really beneficial, but you're running more in the 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's more a sensation on your skin. You're you're almost burning up in there. Your hair's hot, your watch is hot if you're wearing a watch. Where the infrared uh, sauna that I use has the red light blasting down on you, but then you're only in temperatures in the 140 to 156. So you're not getting as hot, but it feels hotter or more of a workout because it is kind of penetrating through your skin, hitting you on a cellular level instead of just your skin surface. So now, now not only are you building up heat shock proteins, you're getting the benefits of the inflammation kind of being broken down as well as that sense of kind of killing off the weak mitochondria or the weak cells and building up the stronger and giving those more energy and more, uh, you know, uh, supplements. Cool. Making me want to buy an infrared light. My mom has one and I use it when I go home and it's awesome. So yeah, these companies are cool. Yeah. We've talked about devices, which is great. What about supplements that you use? I know you like our cordyceps. Is there anything else that you incorporate into your daily routine to help your athletic performance? For sure. I think uh, something with the, the mushroom realm has been very new to me, but since looking up you guys, kind of doing my own information on all the different mushrooms and different benefits from them, uh, it really intrigued me. So for right now, I've been using the cordyceps in the morning to kind of give me that charge, support my charge and energy, and then kind of winding down towards the end of the day. Yeah, the calm really helps support me to, you know, just wind down and um, for me. And uh, then on the opposite spectrum, I don't take a ton of vitamins every single day, but some key ones, um, especially working out always, magnesium for me, I'm trying to get a plenty of that to kind of help support cramping and all of that stuff. 
Um, another good one I use is from Thorn. It's just a multi-athlete vitamin. So it has your B12s and all of that kind of stuff in one simple vitamin. Um, anybody, whether, you know, if you're an athlete or not, getting on a healthy, obviously looking at all the ingredients, a good multivitamin to keep it simple is always smart, especially when I'm traveling. I think while I'm at home, I do rely on eating, you know, so eating my yogurts, my fermented foods for probiotics, eating a lot of dark leafy greens for my fibers. Um, you know, I got the proteins and all of that stuff. So when I'm home, I definitely try to focus on that and, I'm able to go to the farmer's market every Saturday and load up on all those healthy options. Once I start traveling, I definitely start supplementing a little bit more in the sense that you don't always have access to certain key things or certain vitamins. You kind of just got to show up to the store and try to read and decipher uh, the different language on the box and figure out what's in it. So that's when supplementing comes a little bit more key. Some good fish oil, um, I love like krill oil from, you know, uh, the healthy fats and support the omegas and things like that. And you have a 13 month year old and, you know, we don't have any kids, but I, I would imagine that when I do, I, I would want my kid to be as healthy as possible. Right. And it's kind of a, a parent's, uh, natural response or, you know, biological, uh, uh, feeling you want to support your kid, right? And you want this kid to be as healthy as possible. And do you incorporate any kind of like biohacking techniques or um, tools uh, with your kid or do you plan to? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, that's something I've enjoyed. I uh, love cooking, love kind of, you know, providing in that sense. And even on the other spectrum, my wife was so involved with that and so interested in giving him the absolute best. She went um, back to school for baby nutrition and not your typical, you know, where it's the food pyramid triangle and it's, it's more based on, um, you know, all the stuff that we're learning now, grass fed, organic, all these different uh, things, supporting when to feed them and not just giving them purees from day one because that right there is a big thing. I mean, some of those baby food purees are older than the baby itself on the shelf. So you don't really know how long and they have to make it shelf stable and all these things. So we've uh, definitely taken a deep dive in, in that. I mean, he's uh, eating sardines. He loves avocado. He's getting bone broths. Uh, we make these kind of beef sticks where it's a mash uh, puree of meat some vegetables, bone broth, and then you mix in a little beef gelatin. So then it comes into that like more jello-y kind of uh, fixture, cut those into little strips, um, all the puffs and those kind of things we try to avoid just because they have so much rice flour and all of those things like that. Um, they're really just trying to feed them the absolute best, kind of more or less what we're eating. We just kind of make baby friendly and user friendly for him to eat by himself. Yeah, someone actually just uh, wrote in. They had a question: What your diet structure looks like? Um, so you, you a, kind of put a couple superfoods in there, but I don't know if you want to touch upon some of your favorites. Definitely, I think uh, far. I'll go over the favorites, but far as a structure, something I've been following far definitely in season right now. It's more about just uh, I see food and eat it because I'm on the muscle gaining program right now. So lots of intake, but one of the more uh, structural uh, foundations I've followed is kind of cycling through keto, but not super strong and committed to it. So basically, I'll do three days of the week. Uh, for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be doing higher fat, lots of protein, and low carb. Still getting some carbs, not trying to avoid it completely at all, but higher fats, focusing on those, the avocado, the brain octane, kind of like coconut oils and fish oils and things like that. So salmon, fresh fish here in Hawaii is always sustainable. And uh, focusing on that, two days of the week, I'll go heavy carbs and still having a little bit of fat, but heavy carbs, protein. And, and then one day of the week, I'll take a complete day fast. And I'll uh, use that normally on day of recovery. So it'll be a rest day where I have no action going on. Sunday normally is that day for me. 
and um, yeah, I'll take a big dinner on Saturday night and I'll wait until Sunday evening to kind of finish that up. So then going back into that next week, when I do have a Sunday dinner and Monday going back, I really start pulling the energy and pulling all the nutrition, giving the body one day to kind of reset. And um, that's been for me working out really well because I've tried to follow pure keto and it just, it's good in the sense where it really are, if you're doing more longevity stuff for Philip, you know, long, longer marathon style, you definitely want to load up on the fats. It's a more sustainable and keep you burning longer. Where the carb for us paddling, we're doing races from 200 meter sprints, like I was saying, to races that are 32 miles. So I really got to have the whole arsenal and that sometimes happens in a weekend. So Saturday we'll do kind of more sprint based race. And then Sunday we're doing a distance in the 10 to 15 K. So I have to have all the right nutrition and kind of leading up. So I definitely like cycling through it in a sense. So three days, high fat, two days, high carb, one day is kind of a cheat day that Saturday, just kind of focus on whatever I can get. And then one day of fasting. When you try a new diet, how long do you stick with it to know that it's working for you or not? That's a great question. Yeah, I think it's important to, at minimum, try to stay on for that 30 days, that month long of letting your body fully switch over. For instance, if you are a heavy base carb eater and you're like, oh, I've been hearing all this craziness and all this craze about keto. If you go to try keto in the first few days, you are going to feel like absolute crap. You're not going to feel good. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel lethargic. And then, you know, day three, you're like, I'm over it. This doesn't work for me. You really got to break that cycle of going for a couple weeks, you know, going for a week or two, get through that uh, phase of tiredness or, you know, that lethargicness. And obviously trying to set it up in a sense where you don't have a heavy, busy week ahead of you. But if you can kind of plan it in that sense, you know, go through a few weeks of not feeling absolute optimal. But once you break through that cycle, then you're going to be eating fats and feeling fueled up, feeling really good and things like that. So whatever diet or whatever you're trying to uh, kind of pursue, definitely give yourself two to three weeks. And we are open for Q&A now. Um, so you guys are welcome to write it in the chat or unmute yourself and Zoom should allow you to talk, I think. Yeah, well, we're waiting for some. There's a, another one saying, how do you get yourself to be consistent? I think um, we kind of touched base a little bit on it, but I think the key to uh, success is consistency. So that's a great question because um, a lot of us struggle with it. We're all procrastinators at the end of the day. Some are worse, some are uh, not as bad. But setting those daily reminders and having the animals for me has been the big thing. I think uh, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel really helps me push through, okay, well, if I do pound out this week work of, you know, training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week, I'm going to be that much stronger or even looking into a longer term. Um, what are you trying to achieve? I'm trying to become a world champion. So I have to stay consistency to achieve that goal. And if you don't have a goal, sometimes you can just kind of get lost in the, why am I doing this? Or what am I doing this for? What's the exact reason? So set the goal. And it can be big. It can be small. It doesn't really matter. But just having that goal really gives you um, something to hold you accountable, really. And for me, too, um, I'm definitely on that side of uh, the spectrum where I love training or whatever it may be for you guys. But in group situations, I like having that friend to be like, okay, I have to show up there at eight o'clock because so-and-so is meeting me there. And that holds me another way of holding me accountable. So if you have another friend that's kind of on the same basis, if you're trying to be uh, meditating more, if you're trying to be healthier, if you're trying to train harder, you know, try to pick people in that same revenue avenue of, uh, you know, they want to do the same thing. They want to achieve the same thing. And then you guys both can kind of bounce off of each other, hold each other accountable. And through that, I'm sure you're constantly doing research and there's a million and a half influencers out there. And so who, who do you look for? You know, I, I, you brought up a couple during this webinar. Um, are there any people out there that you, or books or movies or anything that you think is just 
an amazing resource for you learning more about biohacking and improving your, your health. For sure. I think uh, the two big uh, main driving forces that I've really followed and, uh, you know, they do their due diligence as far as research and studying is uh, Dave Asprey with Bulletproof. He's on the forefront of trying to crush all these different things and, you know, take that time clock and turn it back so that they're living in, in to 120 still running marathons. Uh, another one would be Ben Greenfield. He's uh, another guy who's up in the, the Northwest and is uh, off the grid palace over there. And he's same thing, you know, he has done the whole athletic side. He's done the student side. And now he's really trying to supercharge himself with uh, health, with fitness, with supplementing, with, you know, he's even going to the extreme of going and using our Western medicine, getting stem cells and all these kind of things to really try to produce um, the top of the line athlete and be the healthiest person he can possibly be. And last one, a really great documentary, maybe not necessarily on um, biohacking, but just a great one for athletes and kind of just every day is In Search of Greatness was a fabulous document I watched. And it's basically the, the point or I got across from it was that nowadays we're so heavily, whether we're in sports, business, doesn't matter what we're in, we're so heavily stuck in structure. We have to do A through Z to achieve this thing that we're trying to achieve. But look at kids, look at all these other people that don't have structure, look how much happier they are. And they're still achieving what they're trying to do, but in such a way more fluid, natural way of achieving things, I think is really important for us to kind of get along because we can get so stuck up in, okay, so if I want to be a business person, I got to go to school, I got to do college, I got to do all these things, but then that necessarily might not be the best thing for you. So it was a good documentary to kind of share that light and um, kind of touch base on a lot of athletes that kind of came before this whole um, phase of, you know, when you're nine years old, you got to start grinding away on the football or baseball, whatever you want to be. You have to be this kid at five years old in the gymnastics room if you want to be an Olympic medalist. And these guys, um, I forget some of the names, but they were top of the line, best in their, their craft. And all they said was that we wanted to go out there to play, not to be in the structure grind of, you know, okay, I got to do A through Z to get there. I love this. It reminds me of um, uh, an expression called hunger is the best spice. Yeah. You can taste the best if you're really hungry. And like, you know, that's something deep and physiological. So it's a great way to kind of wrap this up. Um, we are offering anybody who attended a discount code for mushroom revival stuff. So if you want to try cordyceps and you're an athlete and you want to see what, how it can support you, uh, there's a code biohack15. It'll also be in the follow-up email. But yeah, that'll give you 15% off and you can try any of the products. Um, all of them are wonderful. And that's all uppercase. So that's biohack15. I don't know if it's case sensitive, but okay. But yeah, all uppercase. Um, and then Connor just put in the chat the names of the devices that he mentioned and I'm dying to go back to Hawaii. I've never been to I, I've never been to Maui. I've only been to Kauai. So um, I'm I got I got some really good friends on, on Maui that I'm dying to visit and uh, be cool to hit hit the water with you. That'd be awesome. Definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, Kauai was a great place. Maui has a a big full circle of it has a little bit of Kauai features, a little bit of Oahu features, a little bit of Big Island features. It's pretty well rounded. And uh, yeah, anytime, come over, we'll hit the water and uh, yeah, supercharge ourselves. Cool. And thanks everyone for tuning in. We will send up uh, a follow-up email. And if you think of any questions afterwards, just please email us. And uh, we will try to set up giveaways with all those biohacking tools that, that he listed. And enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> and much love. May the spores be with you. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, especially to you guys, thank you for having me a part of the first one ever. This is super fun. And uh, it's beautiful. I mean, our, our world has taken a turn, but now we have utilized things like Zoom that I didn't even hear about before. And uh, 
you know, allowing us to connect from worldwide. So it's really cool to see everybody on here and uh, the interest is high. Everyone had questions and everyone's wanting to supercharge themselves to be a better version of themselves. So glad you guys joined and until next time. Thanks guys. Yeah,